Nerdiest Prime. Hi, and welcome to Nerdiest Prime, where we are uh, reviewing every episode of Season 5 of Star Trek Discovery. But before we go into that, we need to talk about uh, Star Trek Picard Season 2, because this weekend is the weekend that they go back in time, pull a Star Trek 4, hang out in L.A. and, and La Bar. And so how do you guys feel about being in the in the year Star Trek Picard? Let's start with Jenny. I feel freaking amazing about it. I think yeah? it's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I love Star Trek Picard Season 2. Okay, Namir, what do you feel? How do you feel? <laughs> mm, I had a slightly different reaction. <laughs> I feel pretty ambivalent about it, and I'm, I resent that you brought it up because now I'm remembering <laughs> season two, and I really just wanted to forget that whole thing. So thank you for that. 2024 kind of sucks in Star Trek and in real life, so why, why are we... It's not of note. We're holding out for the I, bell ride. I wish, I wish we were back in the 90s when it was everything felt better. <laughs> and we all wore, wore plaid all the time. Wait a minute. <laughs> We're on a search for one of the greatest powers ever known. You could be very dangerous in the wrong hands. So we're here to, to review every episode of season five uh, of Star Trek Discovery. I'm very happy to be doing this. And That's let's right. start with our first impressions. We're going to do the first three episodes of... Um, of the the fifth season all in one review and so let's start with our first impressions of these first three episodes let's start with jenny Whoa. okay Whoa. i've come i've come into i've come into this season with my i've just taken my expectations and just tossed them out the window so i'm just like i'm just i'm just like a blank slate here you know going in like going in fresh being like okay what do you got for me discovery and I feel that it is a mixed bag that they've got for me. <laughs> it's 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 mixed, you know, like like if you get like the candy you like, and then you know, there's also a bunch of candy in there that you're like, hmm, I didn't ask for licorice, you know. Black licorice too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, mm. yeah. I have I have I have a lot of questions. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay, oh, so yeah. But Namir, what are, what are your first impressions of the first three episodes? I don't know. You know what? I'm trying to fix my light here. I feel like I look like a vampire. <laughs> you don't. You don't okay. look like a vampire. I'm just going to say right now, there's no editing going on in, for this thing. So whatever you <laughs> say is going to be in the show. <laughs> That's perfect. That makes it Excellent. real. Okay. He's like, I'd rather talk about my lighting than this show. <laughs> Normal. <laughs> vampire. No, vampire is good. Less vampire is better? Is okay. Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what are we talking about? Episodes one, <laughs> two, and three of Discovery, mm. season five. What did you think? Uh, okay, look. So here, here's where 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 I'm standing. I I always slag on the show, right? Because I have obvious problems with it, but I don't want to keep doing that. So I there are things that I'm okay with. Um, mm -hmm. as long as I pretend that this is in Star Trek, if I can say to myself, <laughs> this is just science fiction, it's mm -hmm. not, then I'm okay with a lot of it. But once I start thinking this is a Star Trek show, then I'm like, Oh no, you know, and all these random thoughts keep popping into my head where I'm like, no, no, you know, go away. Random thoughts. Um, so if I can stay on that level, I can enjoy some of it. But I, I do have some definite problems. Episode one, I really didn't like, but it kind of got better up until where we're at episode three, where I'm like, you know, on neutral ground with it. Alan. It's almost high praise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, I think I'm I'm with Jenny on this one. I felt that episode one had a lot of the same problems that this plague discovery, and it has you know some of the cliches that plague just TV in general, like the whole when when you come out of the gate and it's like oh we gotta do some action, and then it's like oh two days earlier, and I'm like oh I hate when they do that. 
and then you got to live through it again. You're like, all right. So I hate those type of cliches. I think Picard did that too. But once we got past that, I did enjoy episode two, and even three was was pretty good. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'd say I say it, it. It's it's better than it has been previously recently, and I'm 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 along for the journey. I think it's so far I'm entertained. So. <laughs> So I wouldn't say that this is the worst Star Trek I've ever seen. Um, I would just say it's like the worst TV show I've ever seen, ever. <laughs> she doesn't uh, watch much TV, just so everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, by the time season, episode three had, had come along, I kind of gave up a little bit. But yeah, I, I, I want to be fair. And I'll tell you specific reasons why I don't like the show, but it makes me very angry. Is how it makes me. Um, but let's then let's get into it. Let's talk about the plot because the plot is is basically kind of like taking from uh, not kind of it's taking directly from an episode of Star Trek: The Next Generation called The Chase, where there's the progenitors who are revealed to be this race of humanoid aliens who have you know created uh, humanoid life. Um, and they take this really sweet episode and now they're going to go do something else with it. So how do we feel about the plot in general? Because this all starts off with, you know, David Cronenberg showing up and being red directive and they go on this mission to find out about this stuff. Uh, how do we feel about the plot and how do we feel about them kind of in this season already? It feels like they're mining a lot of like nostalgia they're kind of doing the picard like rule book like oh that works so let's try to do that uh let's uh let's hear from namir to start yeah the, the plot um so it's it's basically indiana jones national treasure kind of thing which i'm okay with but i actually think that this would have been a better plot line for picard it would have been a better pot, plot line for picard season three because it makes a lot more sense, right? Like the chase is Picard's episode. He's an archaeologist. You know, I like the chase episode, and I I kind of always wanted to learn more about the progenitors, but you never you never do, as far as I know, I, unless they're in. Yeah, okay, but you never do. So that that's always an interesting <laughs> question, and it, it, it fits with him, and it fits with his storyline and his motivations and his arc. It's totally out of place for Discovery. Right, it doesn't make a lot of sense, and they're not doing it correctly. Like in, in, you know, like in order for it to to work, there's a series of clues. Sure, they're they're following along this this like path, but you need an antagonist. Like you need you need like the Nazis, and they don't have that. Right, they don't have other groups or races or people other than Maul and and Locke that are and, that are Groot. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, looking for this thing. So there's that tension doesn't really exist. And it's just like a giant escape room. And I, I'm kind of like, not really into that. It's not speaking to the strengths of the show. Uh, and it's not like, what is the point of the show? Right? Like, why does the show exist? It's not for this. So I have problems on, on that level. But you know, once you kind of get rid of that, then I'm okay with the overall storyline because I, you know, because I'm like, okay, you just have to accept it, right? It's it's like being at the dentist. You're like, okay, well, I I have to accept it. I'm 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 gonna get this root canal. It's gonna happen. I might as well lay back and watch, you know, the Nature Channel while it happens. So that's where I'm at. I feel like well, that's the full quote. It's like the dentist. That brings up a, that yeah. bring, that brings up a really good um, question of like, what are the strengths of this show? But we'll get back to that. Uh, Alan, what are your thoughts about the the plot? Uh, I I went into this not knowing what was going on, so I I like that they were picking up on the chase. It's something that needed to be that 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 is an interesting thing to revisit uh, since they this is Discovery going into its final season. I mean, it's it's the star trek that's furthest in the future it's it's you know like 
I think it's a good storyline to kind of just cap off live action Trek, I guess. Because, I mean, Strange New Worlds will continue, but it's in the past, so, you know, whatever. But, you know, if, if nothing happens after Discovery, you know, the fact that, that in the Star Trek universe they're going to unravel the mystery of basically creation, I think that that's, that's a bold a bold uh, move. I don't, you know... Based on past experience, I don't know if they'll stick to landing, but it's a, it's a lofty it's a lofty goal, you know, to kind of tie everything together and and uh, you know I don't feel like there's a whole lot of nostalgia bait here. I mean, they, yeah, there's Picard and, and the basic storyline, but I actually think Discovery's done a pretty good job of avoiding a lot of that fan service. Really, like there's there's a few mm-hmm. like deep cut Easter <laughs> eggs, but really they don't bring it all. I mean, there was the Pike and Spock thing in season two, but for the most part, when they went to the 32nd century, they have not went back to the well and, you know, mind. I don't want to argue with you, but I'm just saying in the first three episodes, (laughs) they bring up the chase, they bring up the Permillions from um, from the the, uh, booby trap. trap, They they bring in the Trill and they do the whole Deep Space Nine Trill thing. They've already had the Trill. But again, it's not... But it's not like Picard where they specifically go back to like the Borg you know it's like oh we're just gonna try to the Borg again like all these things are just references that you can either get or not get and they don't affect the story at all you know it doesn't matter if you know uh, that, it's, it's totally it the whole, it's the whole thing the are. It, none of this stuff matters like oh yeah it's just an old alien base they found okay okay Maybe we'll get it. we'll come back to this <laughs> I don't want to spend half an hour arguing with you because um... you, know. you will lose <laughs> Okay, Jenny, what do you think about the plot? Um, what do I think about the plot? I knew this was a question, and I feel like I don't. Um, I feel like I don't know. Like, the, yeah, like 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 Namir said, we've got this sort of like Indiana Jones esque um, treasure hunt thing happening. And I don't necessarily love how they're doing it. Um, it is very like I don't know, like let them like think about it for a while. I don't know. I, I um um I ooh, plot because because that's how I felt. Cause, yeah, <laughs> plot. I mean, I mean, the last episode four plots. <laughs> It was a lot. Yeah, the last one, it was a lot to find. Um, I, like, the, I, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm having a difficult time articulating what I'm, what I feel here. Because my, my thoughts about it are so scattered. Because it feels scattered. Like, hmm. yes, well, there's the four, a... What are, the, what, what are the four plots? It was... Uh, in... in Episode three, you've got the actual part where they're looking for the clue. You've got Saru and Tarina. You've got Gray and Adira doing their thing. And then on top of that, you've got Rainer and the crew. Mm-hmm. Actually, mm-hmm. not really the crew because Tilly, he's dealing with Tilly, but Tilly isn't even on the crew. There's a lot of people who are not on the crew doing a lot of stuff. Where is Tilly's the crew? on the crew. She's on loan from the Academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I digress. So, okay, we'll we'll come back. To it. I'll, I'll, I'll... We'll get there. So we'll yeah, get there. yeah, I have lots so, to say. Yeah, I mean, I I really like the plot. Like to be fair, I've not watched a lot of Discovery. I watched maybe the first half of the first season, and I didn't mind it really. Um, and then I tried to watch other episodes, and you know, so so the plot doesn't bother me. I like the sort of like Indiana Jones treasure hunt kind of quests a lot. And the chase is, was one of my favorite episodes of TNG. Like when I, when I first saw that one, I was like, this is just a one part or this should be a two part. This is like amazing. This whole concept. And I felt like they wrapped it up really quickly. So for them to go back or for Star Trek to go back to that episode and try to expand on it is great. I love that idea. However, however, the way that uh, Discovery stylistically and the writing deals with anything 
is, is, does not feel profoundly intelligent. And so I feel insulted <laughs> when a writer or a TV show is treating me like I'm an idiot. Mm. Like, and I need to like be hit over the head or, or I'm like three steps ahead of them. So I'm like, yep, mm -hmm. this is going to happen. And this, is, and so that's what I don't enjoy about it. But the plot mm -hmm. itself is a great plot. And if, if, you know, if they can do it, you know, for justice, it'd be, it's going to be great, but I don't think they're going to do justice. So I have a further so, yes. small point that I feel like articulates what my problem is. And it's that they, it, in introducing the plot, they gave us these screenshots, screenshots from the chase, <laughs> um, screenshots, and those screenshots and thinking about the chase really drove home to me that this is not that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like, styli like stylistically, or what do you mean? Uh, stylistically, tonally... Like the chase, the chase was like, it wasn't just about, we've got to like beat somebody to uh, uh, like to the punch or we, we, you know, that we have, you know, we've just got to find the answer. Like, like it was, it was, they were so excited to know the answers mm -hmm. and they, the crew was working together <laughs> um, and everybody had something to contribute and uh, and there's just you mean, this everybody sort of was hopeful... doing their jobs and everybody was smart yes and yeah. and we knew what their jobs were anyway so yeah so i there's a there's a a wonder there's a wonder that is missing from this adventure so far i feel there that's better yeah and, and i feel also that there's like what I liked about the chase, mm -hmm. you know, what was that it was like this amazing mystery. There was the, the, you got to learn a lot about Picard and his backstory and how much he liked archeology span and his relationship with his professor. And then mm -hmm. it, there was this big mystery resolve and there was something in the DNA and, and what could it be? And it kind of at the, at the end that the, the thing that they built was just a message of goodwill which basically was like the ending of Close Encounters or something, yeah. then that felt really good. You know, that felt yeah. like... So I think it causes a problem for Discovery. Either A, they're going to do the whole mystery and at the end it's going to be like the Death Star or some weapon that's going to destroy the universe. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be boring because that was, the, that was the thing that the chase avoided as like an mm -hmm. obvious answer. And so, but if they go B and they actually do the chase again, it's another little message saying like, you always were meant to be, then they're just going to redo the chase. And right. so I don't really see how this is going to go well. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think they kind of talked a, a little bit about it in episode three. What's the, the main scientist's name? I forgot his name. He, he's the guy that invented the mushroom. You know what's really funny? Oh, I thought he oh, was the chief it. engineer all this time. I was convinced he was the chief engineer. And then I was like, why is he wearing blue? And what is Jet Reno's job? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, wait, she's the chief <laughs> no, engineer. And he's just the science uh, guy? Yeah, he he ran the engineering department in the first season because the spore drive was what sh propelled the ship. Right. So he was in charge it of that department. still is. There never was a chief engineer, really. But the spore drive is still what runs the ship. But then they got Reno They have to plug him two. in to do it. And she's like O'Brien. Reno's like O'Brien. And but yeah. Like, why but she's kind of like a mechanic. I have but some she's the serious, engineer. Yeah, she I have some serious so, questions about jobs. <laughs> you know, and, and that's kind of one of my problems with the show. I, I wasn't mm -hmm. going to talk about this, but since it's here... It's a, I don't know who anybody is and what they do on the ship. Mm -hmm. They just appear when they're needed, mm -hmm. you know. Like it and it's been unclear. <laughs> it's but it's been five seasons. Yeah, it's been unclear for five seasons. Yeah, that's crazy and, to me. Well, Michael Burnham is the captain. That, yes, that, I can tell you that. Yes, but and, oh, so, and, and uh, Commander uh, Keelan Calvin Keith Rennie is the the he's the, right. So the first so officer. I'm delighted that he's on the show. I. I like the character. I'm into it. But so, so what, one of my notes from episode one was, I like this Rainer guy. Oh, Vance. We love Vance. Um, oh, look, book's back. And then I was like, 
but none of these people are the crew, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like, like I'm really excited to see people who are not the crew of this ship. And because I don't know who the crew of the ship are, you know? And yeah. That, they're, they're just the most interesting characters are the supporting characters in this show. I find. Yes. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like all these people who, who like work on the bridge and are in the scenes, although yeah. that's a whole other thing for season. <laughs> anyway, because they're not even there, but I just, well, and, and that's one of the things that that makes me feel like it's not really Star Trek because Star Trek is yes. always about the crew, other than maybe Picard, right? But Picard was not a show about a ship, oh. right? Like they're they're on a ship. It's the crew that we care about, right? Mm -hmm. It's everybody, you know, being together as a as a family, right? That's that's mm -hmm. why Strange New Worlds works okay, right? Because we get to know all of these characters and they. And I just don't understand why they don't do that in in Discovery. It just doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense to me. You That's know, like it was a, it was a flawed concept to begin with to focus on Michael Burnham. Well, what is the and concept? Then, I don't understand was, the point was, of the show. It was, it was basically to the whole the whole show was to show her from her her redemption arc, you know, and focus on her character throughout. Mm -hmm. You know, going from convict to to captain. And therefore, all these other mm -hmm. people are just around her, and yeah, they don't get their they don't get their due. Yeah, but didn't, didn't and that, they try didn't to correct become... that, but it's still kind of it's still kind of clumsy. <laughs> and they just never get there. They keep reinventing they, it each yeah. season, so it's hard to. Mm -hmm. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna change the premise of the show, just start like just reboot the show, you know, like just destroy the discovery, you know, and, and have. <laughs> And have a, they build another ship without you know that isn't powered by mushrooms you know that that has a crew that people care about and happens to have Burnham and Saru who I like and all the characters that everybody likes you keep them mm -hmm. and you you just start the show again like why keep going with this flawed premise because mm -hmm. you're right like nobody I mean I get the feeling that I'm not the only one obviously I'm not the only one that doesn't connect with the crew because the crew isn't they're not real characters, right? You, there's mm -hmm. that pilot who, who keeps getting introduced every season. And you're like, I don't know anything about this pilot. You know, like, who is she? I, mm -hmm. I think they, they killed off a bunch of characters on the, Does on she the bridge. Like, one, like the one boar guy and not... Uh, Detmer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that, yeah, is that yeah. the pilot? Okay. Yeah. Detmer is, is... and... Awushakun? Awushakun? Awushakun, Well, the yeah. other thing is that they, they had a perfect opportunity to do that in the... In, I think in the second episode when Commander Rainer came episode. on board and they introduced everybody on the bridge and I was like, oh, this is great because I don't know who anybody is. <laughs> and they said, well, that's so-and-so and that's so-and-so. And I was like, what do those people do? What do they do? You can't just say oh, that. don't worry. You'll meet Detmer and Awushikin later. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like they name dropped them. And then, yeah. they, and then they just never showed up in the episode. They name dropped Awushikin yeah. twice. I have finally figured out most people's job, but I don't know why it took so long to figure it out. <laughs> I mean, I, I know who the communication guy anything. is. Like, I know who the security tactical guy is. I know who the pilot navigator are. I don't know what like, Linus the, the Saurian does. No. I don't know what the weird-headed person does. Mm -hmm. The the alien with the huge... I don't know what... Yeah. I don't know what they do. Like Like... <laughs> They don't even talk. They go like, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> but they the still. Moment, yeah, you know, I don't know what they do. <laughs> the second episode that I that this was really driven home for me is Saru and Burnham are on the surface of this planet. They're on an they're on an away time team, and yes, they have personal transporters, whatever. But like. Only Tilly and Adira are monitoring this away team. Who has the con? What's happening on the bridge? Like, and they're trying to solve this problem. And it's just the two of them. They don't have any other insight from any other department. Like, and then Rainer comes in from like somewhere else to help. And again, not on the crew, but like, like the people who are on the crew on the bridge doing their jobs, which are something, had nothing to contribute to that entire sequence and it's like that made me want to scream like that drove me crazy 
Yeah, I, I think there's oh, a, like a flawed <laughs> premise that they think that the audience just cares about those characters that they're that they're writing about, which it, I I don't think is true at all. I think those are the characters that people care the least about. Well, just say I mean, people love them, is, love them. Jen Reese, the tactical officer, is the second officer. He takes the command of the bridge when when the EXO and captain are there. Just so where was he? <laughs> well, I don't know. He just wasn't important to the plot, I guess. They didn't need yeah. him, like, they didn't I mean, need him to that's, chime in. <laughs> that's nice, but I'm not going to go on the internet and look that up while I'm watching the episode. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you would know, you know if you I'm... watch previous episodes. He takes command when if they're not on the ship. Well, but I, I think that <laughs> it, it points to what... Because I think what I find so frustrating is that I'm so frustrated while I'm watching the show, and I don't understand why I'm frustrated. Mm-hmm. But it's just really bothering me. And you guys are... You guys bringing up all these little things are like, oh, mm-hmm. yes. It's like there's lots of bad writing. And so this is a, a good example of bad writing. Every character has to have a function in the script. So the function can be explicit, like in Star Trek, where this is the engineer. This is the counselor. This is the... So we always know that when War says something, he's going to say something about security or the shields or whatever. And his job is to be grumpy on the bridge. And Troy's job is going to be to be empathetic and mm-hmm. and thoughtful and and we understand so when they're every time they come into a scene you can anticipate you can uh you know have emotional attachment to what's going on with the characters and the dynamics and trying to you know all this kind of stuff and it's a great interplay between you as and, a viewer in the show and you've got a bunch of different people with different perspectives who are experts in their fields contributing to solving problems together <laughs> hey yeah. Right, yeah, but that's, so, and, and, that's not yeah. what this show is, right? That that's like the it's, problem. it's and it's <laughs> never been that way. It's that's so that's why it's not Star Trek. Like you you've articulated exactly why this isn't Star Trek, right? But it is I, science fiction. I guess it, it's just come to a head where where actually like like Lucas just said, I think I I think I am also finally understanding what it is about this show that just doesn't work for me. You know, like. And, yeah. and I think you can add other things to that. Like the... <laughs> I, know. I, know. I expected Jay to come in like all positive, like, oh, this... one of the discovery just... lovers. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, I think so the much. problem is like, like we all kind of want to like it. Like we yes. want to like it. Right, and we're re- and I know I'm really trying to like it, but there's just so many things that that cause me not to. Right, there's so many reasons not to that it's difficult to overlook them. Well, and I mean, and the, another problem that I'm having that really makes me angry are the idea of the personal transporters and the and the little uh, replicator things that that when the weapons appear in their hands, because I get that they're like cool things and they're mm-hmm. sort of like the holograms in. Uh, Picard, but in terms of a a story function, it doesn't make any sense. And it's lazy and it's boring. It's boring to have them have all this technology at their fingertips. They just go doo-doo, and then they're just anywhere they want to be instantaneously. It's like they're nine hundred years. The whole the point of the transporter, yeah. <laughs> the whole I, I, point I, of the transporter yes. was it, it was a it was a narrative uh device so that you know you didn't have to land the ship and lose all this time landing the ship and then you can have a conversation on the way to the transporter you can be in the transporter it's the way that people come mm-hmm. on the ship that you can uh, greet them it, it, it serves so many functions narratively and mm-hmm. this it doesn't serve any function narratively it's just a, a lazy boring gadget thing yeah why would people <laughs> walk anywhere like i i they should be 400 pounds you know, like they just be like, like transporting everywhere they go, right? Mm-hmm. Like in Wally, yeah, that's all they're doing. Like and of course, the other problem, and the other problem is like they they miss they they uh, malfunction all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, we can't use these because there's rocks around us. So, I mean, like, mm-hmm. you know, like like oh oh, we can't transport our phasers because of the tree cover. I'm like, well, that wouldn't be a problem if you had actual physical phasers on. Yeah, you. and that in itself. I think I wouldn't mind so much if it then was a problem that needed solving. You know what I mean? But it's just kind yeah. of, it's, they just sort of like they work or they don't work depending on the plot instead of, in, instead of them not working, being like the plot of a story, you know, mm-hmm. like, Oh no, the transporter's mm-hmm. yeah. broken. 
and there's or the holodeck is broken yeah, or yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah, yeah. and again i mean yeah. i mean yes obviously and those are kind of cliches in star trek but but one of the reasons that those cliches work is because it's not about the thing that's happened it's about what everyone does to fix it yeah it's pre it's exactly it's presenting them with problems and roadblocks and then the fun yeah. is watching them solve it it's watching yes. them be clever and you know you know have some ingenuity and work around these things which mm -hmm. they they don't really ever do yeah unless it's a, <laughs> like a really <laughs> unless it's like a really cliche w way of doing it right like mm -hmm. the, the answer is always something really like you know i i guess we'll we'll get to it but it's never yeah. it's never a problem that surprises us as an audience we're always like yeah i knew they were going to do that mm -hmm. you know how does everybody feel about david cronenberg being on this show <laughs> I think it's great and weird and random and it's, I love that he wears glasses in a weird way. And, um, I, I, I still, I'm, I, I mean, I have questions about like who and what he is and I kind of hope that there's like an answer to those questions by the end of the season. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like, like it's weird, but like, I like it kind of. Is this the first time he's been on the show? No. No, okay. He's been there right since they got to the, to the future. Oh, okay, got it. So he's a recurring mm -hmm. character. It's not the first yeah. time he's, that he's the future man. What is his? What does he do in the show? He's he, like, I mean, he's he was kind of official. like a weird he works in intelligence. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Mm. Like me, like, but he's not. He's kind of mysterious. Ostensibly Section Thirty One, but maybe he's Doctor Kovic. Is that his name? Yeah. 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 It, it reminds me of Doctor Kovach. From ER? Who is, uh, who is the, 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 who builds the <laughs> nuclear bombs. Or no, he, he hacks nuclear bombs and, uh, and never say never again. Oh. And he goes, All right. Klobach. And he's like, no one will stop us now. Ha 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 ha. And then I put James Bond over everything else. So every time he says, I'm like, oh, it's Dr. Kovach. Oh no, he's Dr. Kovach. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. And what's and what about like the THX 1138 room? Is, is, is that new? Like the That's the white room? New. Yeah, the, the infinity room. thing is all new. Oh, yeah, the yeah, infinity room. Yeah, yeah, that's a new yeah. the cone of silence. Yeah, that's that's a <laughs> new little yeah. the little yeah. yeah. Okay. That's new. all right. That's oh, good. Yeah. Red, I'm learning a red lot. Red directive is also new. We've never oh, okay. heard that that's before ever. Yeah. yeah. That reminds me of. Uh, when there was that, I think it was when somebody had planted a a phaser on the on the the quarters of the. It was a phaser overload, and then Kirk says, uh, "Double red alert." And I think it's the only time he calls it double red alert. <laughs> Super <laughs> duper what, red alert. <laughs> yeah. And that's what like red directive sounds like. Double Super duper directive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Star Trek so smart in the past. <laughs> and what's uh what's 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 black alert is that when they they turn on the, the shrim drive yeah oh, okay got it alan said they just ran out of colors and they were like that's <laughs> black alert well, they had blue alert for landing voyager and you know all that they had their all okay yeah okay. alerts. Hmm. Huh. very good um yeah. so let's go back to cal and keith Arini because mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. he's obviously he's like the best part of the show uh, whenever he, I like him as an actor, so yeah, I, I love him. I, I and not only do I love him because he's great, but it's like every time he shows up in other shows, like in Battlestar Galactica or yeah. in Californication, like he makes those shows better. And then he he just comes to the rescue and makes Discovery better. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think Alan, you were saying that it, he's kind of like Jellico. He comes in and he starts. He's like yeah. a. He's like he a tough cookie. Everything he's everything up, everything makes up. everybody uncomfortable and and uh, on edge mm -hmm. and. And he's just yes. so. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's almost like he exists, sort of, almost like an odd universe inside Discovery, because all the other scenes that don't have him in him are like so boring and dull. <laughs> well, so and so then so when, so he's so in, so when he's in the scene, is like, okay, what are we gonna do? So I mean, but yeah. it's, it doesn't really, it doesn't really affect the plot or have anything to do with anything. He's just mm -hmm. like an interesting character doing, you know. So I know this. Wow. Yeah, I, I said said not to not to 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 slag on Discovery and just talk about these episodes. But the fact is that that the crew has always been painfully dull in this show, for the most part. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> and and uh, you know, I don't get why why they write them so dull. Like it feels like early TNG where like nobody really had a whole lot of personality yet. Yeah. But they've been doing it for like four four seasons now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just and I find this crew too is like it's it, it it's representative of this like current mindset where everybody gets a trophy in school. Like everybody gets mm-hmm. congratulated mm-hmm. for every little thing that they do in their job. It's like, oh I plotted a course. Congratulations. Yeah, well, I've been doing this for five years. I'm like, I know, but you're still doing a stellar job. Good work, everyone. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. you're all great too. And they go around the room, and they're always congratulating each other and clapping. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all around. What Which, is, yeah, what yeah. is this? I'm like, are we working at Blockbuster? Is this a team team pet? All the time? <laughs> and, and and it's like everybody else in other Star Trek shows. They just get the respect to do. You know, they just assume you're going to do your job, and that you're going to do it perfectly fine mm-hmm. and these guys are always gonna like everybody's so great and they need positive reinforcement all the time so i like that they've brought in rainer now and he just doesn't have any time for any of this like hand-holding bullshit and, and he kind of shakes it shakes it up he him being there makes this crew more interesting because they're all on edge now they're all like yeah Ugh. yeah <laughs> like, and like it's a lot more fun to watch when tilly yeah. told him off i was like okay <laughs> it's like oh okay. yeah that was the like, that was the best scene out of the the, the, the three episodes <laughs> was, was when was, uh yeah. when tilly tells him off because it, it was just it was just like oh all of a sudden she has something like to do really mm-hmm. and there's like uh you know and she, uh, just well there's a lot of scenes in the show where they're just kind of talking about their emotions like they're, they there's like and, which i don't i don't mind i think yeah it's, it has, you know it's 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 an interesting direction but they do it a lot you know and not like, well. it's, it's, it's just and not well it's so yeah. lazy yeah it's like, lazy just... writing and and what's even the worst than that sorry to interrupt but i'm gonna just mm. i have to say this thing. so the, <laughs> the worst than that is is when one character tells the other character well this is how you're feeling mm-hmm. and then describes their inner like well, because, you know, you lost your job three years ago, I bet you you're feeling really angry right now mm-hmm. about that guy having that promotion. So, you know, the, the, I'm like... Oh, yeah, oh, that, yeah, that happens it's a like, lot. Like, in the show, they, they narrate what we're watching, which drives mm-hmm. me crazy. There's a lot There's yeah. a lot of, uh, of uh, tell, not show in this show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. A, a very good example of that kind of just needless talking... Is you've got you've got Tignataro who is delightful pretty well in everything that you have her doing, and this scene that she had with Stamets where she just explained to Stamets that like these teenagers are gonna probably break up was so boring. Yeah, like, it was, they it made Tignataro boring. Usually, yeah, usually <laughs> she comes in and it's like, oh yes, Tignataro because she gets so yeah, I was do. like. And then it's like, I was oh, that for wasn't her very to do good. Something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then she went in. Then she went in with Rainer and says, "Last time I was here, I had chips." And it's just they just stare at each other. <laughs> I'm like, perfect. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah. her. That's Reno. And it's like so good. Yeah. <laughs> Another, you know, when they had the 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 characters coming in to talk to him, and Doctor Pollard was in there and said like two words, and Raven Dowda is an incredible actress, and oh, sh- that character is great and so underutilized. That's it. That yeah. they, they brought her in to say like three words. <laughs> you know, I don't even know <laughs> who you're talking about. <laughs> oh, well, the other the doctor. The, re- the other the, doctor. The yeah. There's where, an like, there's an other doctor. There's another doctor when well, she's, when Culver she's the was medical dead, doctor. She was, yeah. Yeah, she was like the 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 chief physician. So then who is Culbert? He's, he's like all, Chancellor Troy. He, He's, he's the he's CMO, a but he's also he's also the he's a guy. He, he's a guy that's possessed in the in the third episode, well, and he starts to like, hey, he hey, was Dixo, Disco Dad or something. <laughs> but no, he's kind I, of he, taking on taking on a psycho, psychology role. For the yeah, crew. but he's Especially also since, since they went to the future and they kind of got to deal with the fact that they're out of time and away from their families. He's kind of adopting right. a counselor type role right. versus yeah. versus medicine, like in the early seasons. So. Said, Can like, I tell like, you about part a... of my medical training? I have, I, I'm like, go ahead. Yeah. So I just remembered a scene. I think it's in episode two when when Saru 
leaves leaves to become an ambassador and mm -hmm. they're having you know burnham and saru are talking in the in his in his room and they're reminiscing about the time you know that the the thing happened to him and burnham was there and they're all about to cry and then she's like it which was happens. i'm sure it was i'm sure it was fantastic and i was kind of into it i was like yeah. oh yeah this is okay and then she's like okay but i'll see you in a few months <laughs> You know? And I'm like, what? He's just coming back in a few months. You, all of this is because he's coming back in like, like February. You know? <laughs> you know, like I leave, I leave work for a couple of months, and people are like, "You were gone? I didn't even know." You know? <laughs> you know? But he, well, I thought you were in your office your whole time. I was like, no, I was away. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, it just seems so over the top for what the actual situation was and i find that that happens quite a bit mm -hmm. in you know in the show the only reason i can think of for them doing that is if either burnham or saru dies at the end of this season and they have to have their like final kind of goodbye but if they end up coming back together at the end of it i'm just like Ugh. well that was his final goodbye in season two like he thought he was dying and then he ended up just he was just like yeah but that was actually that was an actual story <laughs> Yeah, that was that really was, good. Too. That was yeah, a, like, was a well, good storyline like for him. Yeah, that was a great story. But yeah, anyway. I, I like that scene with with Burnham and Saru. I always like those two together because they have a brother sister kind of relationship, and it is it is kind of the heart of this show. So, you know, I I find that Burnham gets her best moments with Saru. Like I don't yeah, know if I, I, I like mind. her like her doing her action action movie stuff with book, and they're kind of quipping and giving one liners and. She's not very good. I don't, or I just don't think that character is good with delivering one quick one liners and zingers. You know, she's no, you know, Sneakwit is not Anson Mount. <laughs> she does not have no. That, and she that, she grew up on Vulcan. Timing. Yeah. So it always yeah. seems anytime she tries to be funny or cool, it was like it kind of like. Eh. But when she was mm -hmm. Saru, was kind of gentle and sweet, and you know, oh, this is nice and. But yeah, the action Burnham, I don't. It's like it's kind of cringy mm -hmm. a little bit. And, and yeah, it's not. Well, it feels like the kind of the problem of the show is it's very soap opera ish, and there's these things that are going on in the plot that a are really being talked about on a very like on the nose level. You know, mm -hmm. there's no subtlety in it, and it's and and it does not it hasn't to do with anything like. Sure, Saru's fine. I don't have this fondness for the character because I haven't watched the show for five years. He's fine. But who cares that he got a promotion and who cares that he's... Mi There's a whole subplot about whether they should send out the wedding invitations or not. Like, what <laughs> is this about? Like, yeah. why is this in the show? Yeah. Why is this important? You know, like, it doesn't mean... It doesn't... Nothing is coming of this. And it's mm -hmm. just... And it's boring. And so... And there was a whole other part of the show that was just about whether these two teenagers are going to break up or not. And I don't mm -hmm. care. And, the, and there's nothing more cringy than watching two people who don't know how to communicate properly. Try to, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was so hard to watch. Like a show like Deep Space Nine is a good example of being able to merge the two, the two things. Like you've still got a crew that's doing their jobs, solving problems and D Space Nine at least has a has a you know an emotional and also like like plot wise through through line, but like you can have these I don't know like like you can have conflicts or you can have like romances or but but I think this, the mistake that Discovery makes is that it does those things at the expense of the other stuff, you know like. But also, also it's not. Since the characters aren't very well drawn, mm -hmm. then there's nothing at stake really, and you don't get drawn into like, um, you know, like there's uh, that's you know, uh, interpersonal kind of stuff is always going to be welcome in every totally TV show. That's what makes it worth watching. If it's mm -hmm. just a BBU, then I don't care about Star Trek. But if it's if it's I don't care about the characters because they're not well drawn, and then the the situation is very cliche. Like it was like. Like the two teenagers breaking up was like, I think we should be apart. I think so too. Like that. Okay. 
there was I what it's like something a teenager would write. Like that was the level of like Well, it's it's yeah. weird because there's no there's no real conflict, right? Like there's conflict mm-hmm. in the plot, in the action scenes, but there's no real conflict between the characters. Right? Like mm-hmm. Even with Rainer and Burnham, there's a little bit of tension, but Burnham at the end of the day is like, ah, come join my, my crew, we'll figure it out. And Rainer's like, nah, I don't think so, but you can see he's he's starting to kind of adapt. Was, and, you know, like, there's no... Wasn't that Roddenberry's so I think vision, though, of Starfleet? Especially when Next Generation come out, nobody fights. Everybody oh, yeah, together. but 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 you can also <laughs> see too, many examples of of... of past writers making that work Hmm, you know finding ways to like work within that within the box yeah like like you 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 can have i think you can have no conflict but you need to have problem solving like you can Mm -hmm. you can have like no conflict but everybody's working together as a team to solve these really interesting problems yeah you can't not have both because if you (laughs) don't have either one of those it gets really boring really quickly and then you have two teenagers breaking up in a way that is totally unrealistic. They're just like, okay, I guess we're not we're not together anymore, you know, you know, or like or like, I don't think we should send that wedding invitation. I think we should. Okay, let's send it. You know, like it's it, that's not how how people interact. It's not how relationships work. They don't. I, really, thought, I, they I don't. actually I actually like that. I thought that was kind of I I like Tarina and Saru's relationship. It's just. It's like it's like a break from all the all the you know because I find Discovery is a lot of like flash and like there's so much going on CGI and bullshit and and it's like they're like a gentle a gentle uh, uh, just sigh of, uh, you know or, or, or yeah I, I breath don't, of fresh air I, I guess don't... you know and because mm-hmm. they're so sweet and gentle and they even fight sweetly and gently and it's kind of fun to watch them because <laughs> I know I don't he's I don't such a gentle the... person and she's such a gentle but they're disagreeing and it's like it's kind of funny to watch them <laughs> watch them fight but they're not they're not fighting like anger it's just like mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a little passive aggressive gentle way of i just i, I thought that was it was fun i, I, I know i, like I don't i don't mind i don't mind the idea of of i don't i don't mind the idea of the wedding invitation or the the wedding itself or it's just the way that it's executed, right? It's just the way that it's done is really super uninteresting, right? Like it's 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 not fun to watch, right? Because there's <laughs> there's nothing happening, right? And, and then when you do have conflict, it's in the form of little drones hunting you, and you go pew 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 pew. pew. There's no strategy of like you go this way, I go this way, and then we'll like do something. And those those drones were like so like like accurate when they needed to be and then so inaccurate and lost in when they needed to be you know there was a whole point where they, they did you know they do the the whole um uh soap opera thing where you keep cutting back to three or four different storylines mm-hmm. and it's like as if the wax storyline kind of goes on to pause mm-hmm. as we do these three other storylines it comes back because they were on the planet being hunted by those drones that look like they're going to kill you any second. And we do three other scenes and come back and they're still hiding behind the rocks. I'm like, aren't you dead yet? How is this mm-hmm. possible? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're like, how is that drone not found you by now? And it's like, so the point is there's co- conflict, but it's very boring. You can, it, it only matters if you're actually in danger and you actually might die. But if you're just going, pew, 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 pew. And then quip, 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 pew, 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 pew joke, pew, pew, <laughs> then it's, it's not really interesting. And that was one I, thing I, I found. I the fact. I, I found that a little bit dull and repetitive was that, you know, we had Book and Burnham facing off against a threat on the planet and doing the pew, 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 pew to the quick, quick zinger, you know. And they did the exact same mm-hmm. thing next with the invisible, the invisible trill monsters. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, oh, they're doing the same thing again where they're just like running around, hiding. You know, quipping, pew pew pew. <laughs> like, it felt it felt kind of kind of repetitious. Like, put some different people there. Like, and just I guess Co- and, 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 was and, there, but, but not only that, Culver. but they. I I was in that they they completely ripped off a lethal weapon trope. Did you guys any, anybody catch that? <laughs> No. The the one, two, three, is it on three oh, or yeah, is it yeah, on yeah, go? Yeah, yeah. That's lethal weapon. That is yeah. out of like that's and it's like somebody just cut and pasted lethal weapon into there. Do we do it on three or 
Oh, I didn't do it. One, two, three. I didn't do it. Is it on three or after three? I didn't, I didn't recognize it as a reference to Lethal Weapon, but I've seen that so many, so many times in so many places that it was very like, oh, this is a bit of a ham-fisted sort of, here's a little funny thing. Especially because, because, because for me, it was just like, these two spent, what, 18 months or something, like, working together? Mm -hmm. They would, they would have had that conversation two years ago. <laughs> It like, have worked out the one, two, three thing. Yeah, like, yeah. I should be familiar with like, how each one operates by now. Thing that should have been an opportunity to show how much they're still connected, because they're I don't know. And if it was intended to do the opposite, it didn't. One, two, three. Police, three. Oh, hey. One, two, three, go. Hey! Just go then. You know what okay, I have a well, problem with? Well, tell me. I don't like Tarina's name. It's dumb. Who's Tarina? Who's Tarina? Tarina again? is the Vulcan. Her name isn't Tarine or Toron or whatever. It's Tarina. Tarina. <laughs> Do you know any other Vulcan that has a name like that? It's like it's like Deborah. Like Deborah. Yeah, it's Vulcan like Deborah. In, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like it's actually it's worse than Deborah. It's like it's like uh, uh, like Daisy or like it's 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 just it's like why is it such a like I don't Dainty know name. to Paul Tarina yeah. <laughs> yeah you're right Ladies, that's a good point that's, that's that's the pre right. she's the president right she's president Tarina she's the president she's yeah. the president the Navarre leader yeah or ambassador or whatever yeah. president I guess oh Navarre those are like Ta the Romans Tarine. and the, the, Vulcans, the, Romans and the Vulcans yes reunified. Tarina. You. Oh, sorry. That was. <laughs> sorry. All right. Sorry. Like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm only gonna complain about two more things. Okay. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, then go to well bed. okay. So, do we all get a couple of complaints? <laughs> I, I I I mean I like like I said I like uh, Commander Rayner I like I especially like that whole stuff where he's being introduced to the crew and he's like being kind of a hard ass and I'm kind of worried that he's gonna they're gonna turn him around so quickly like in the next episode he's gonna be really nice and be like I'm sorry everybody uh, mm. and I'm gonna be really disappointed because you know with Jellico the you could argue in some ways that Next Generation as a show is a much more like mm, like happy-go-lucky everybody's you know, mm. show in general. And to have... And we're more invested is, in those characters, so it's more upsetting mm, when someone's a dick to them. Mm. Yeah, and then when he comes in and everybody tries to talk to him, in, including Counselor Troy to Jellico, mm. and Jellico never comes around. He never apologizes or never <laughs> says, like, like he just, true. like, leaves and, like, see you guys, he dicks later. Like, he's just see like, never. I'm not a... And, and, and I'm kind of afraid that, that, that that's not going to... That's what's going to happen with this guy. Is that in one episode, they've already turned him around. He's going to be like, I've been a hard ass for five years, but just one conversation with Tilly, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. I, I would prefer to see, like Jellico, you know, that the crew recognizes his skill and his confidence, yes. you know, his confidence, and then they respect him and his methods because they get results. Mm -hmm. But they probably won't do that. He'll have to. He'll but have to is, is, give is, everyone a trophy and 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 high five everybody. Yeah, because the, the show is geared to Gen Xers, <laughs> you know, and 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 that's what's annoying. Of these characters, they're like they're like um, the younger characters on the show are like uh, carbon copy of Gen Xers. The way they talk, and Gen Xers. It's like, yeah, I don't I'm think sure you need Gen Xers. Millennials, no, we're Gen Xers. Yeah, that's I'm, us. I'm talking about. What are, what the ones that Gen, Gen Zs? Sorry. Yeah. Gen Z. Yeah, I wouldn't you say millennial because I'm millennial. I wouldn't talk like yeah, that. Yeah, no, Gen <laughs> Tignataro no, Gen... is a Gen Xer. <laughs> yeah, no Gen 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 Zs. Gen Zs? What do we call them in Canada? I don't know. Um if you <laughs> grew up with yeah. American Sesame Street, you say Z. Yeah, Gen, Gen Z. <laughs> and, and I just I just well it's, it's the same thing you're talking about. It's like People are talking back to, and, and fist pumping and doing all sorts of stuff. Like, and you're like, 
You're in the fucking military. Like, why are you talking like this to your captain or to your commander? You know, permission to speak freely and just kind of starts talking. Like, you didn't wait. You're supposed to wait. Like, <laughs> I was like, point. I didn't give you permission. That was a great moment. Yeah. <laughs> And then she just she just talks back at him, and it's like, and nothing happens. She doesn't like get reprimanded mm-hmm. for like subordination or putting the mm-hmm. brake or anything. It's just like, yeah, you know, and and that's like what the whole thing about, you know. Anyways, don't I will say, but that's Burnham's but style, like, and it makes it her very unique in Star Trek. Is that she runs a very loosey goosey ship, where it's like mm-hmm. she wants to hear everybody's feelings and everybody's ideas, and you know, it's like where. It's a horrible it, idea. I know. It seems like she's very indecisive. <laughs> like she needs everybody's input to make any sort of decision because she's always worried about how it's going to affect everybody. And I'm like, you just got to <laughs> bring the hammer down. Tell people what they're, what they're doing. I, okay, but I don't I don't mind that style of leadership. But I, I, think I, I yeah, I don't mind that. But I don't. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. But but I, <laughs> but I think you're like you're right. It's it's some sort of acknowledgement that they're on a military ship of some kind you know like even just a little bit is okay you know but they don't do any of that right it like a it's a science there's... ship too so they're not really military like so much as the ship is mostly science. they're starfleet what well, they're, yeah, starfleet. Exactly. they're starfleet well i mean Sorry, yeah, they're a science oh. ship their role oh, well, originally was a science was just a science vessel it's a science vessel it's not a, it's not like starfleet the enterprise where it's like a war the, sorry they're a science vessel they're a science vessel yeah but what the hell are they doing? They're Why a, are they going after this thing and, and on planets and fight? They're a prototype ship that was designed to like not just explore yeah, but, nebulas. They were just so why aren't they doing science? Stuff, so it was all scientists on it's it. The, it's the least sciencey of all the Star Trek shows. It's like no science. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever kind of get the feeling with this crew that like that they? Well, I mean, I mean, we've you know we've discussed the fact that the, that, that they don't feel like Starfleet, but it's almost like they literally just like had a job fair and people just like came. And were like, I'll do it. you know, like they're just like random people have got hired to do these jobs, and we're not really sure what the jobs are, but they just kind of like <laughs> fill whatever roles. You know what I mean? Like it's like yeah, like, like it's a food like, court in space. Everybody well, in lies last, in their resume. In, <laughs> I know lots of that last shot, astro rooms. <laughs> that last shot of the bar, I was so confused because, yay, cool, there's a Ferengi bartender wearing an ops uniform. Like, he's got a yellow uniform on behind the bar. And I'm like, and he even was like, hey, welcome to yeah, blah, blah. He's operating the, 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 um, the, <laughs> <laughs> the beer tap he's operating like, he's the he's the tap op level three yeah i'm just like why 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 is this so he just like does this for fun or like this is his like side hustle or what like well the, another, but the, uh, the details don't matter to the show exactly right? it's, yeah it's the exactly. details are irrelevant yeah i think that, that that specific thing and this what's been going on I, you know, again, I haven't really watched the rest of Discovery, but in these three episodes, there's so many callbacks to nostalgia. And I think mm-hmm. he's supposed to, or whoever that character is, is supposed to be kind of like a callback to Cork. Oh, absolutely. But why is he wearing like a uniform? Like, <laughs> I know, that's what I mean. Is it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, and I mean, I don't, I, it's, you know, it's difference between real life and TV shows. In real life, I want people to be nice. In TV shows, <laughs> I want people to be not nice because it's more interesting. But I mean, and Picard, you know, he was like very professional. He wasn't like coddling anybody, but he also was very respectful. And and he really nurtured like people's confidence. Um, He was a great leader and he did all the things that, that they're trying to get Michael Burnham to do without just being like loosey goosey, which is not being a leader. It's like the worst type of leadership of not taking charge that, you know, okay. not, uh, that's what people need. People need you to be, to be like, Oh, somebody's in charge. Thank God. Tell me mm-hmm. please what to do. Especially if you're young, you need to, you need guidance. You can't yeah. just be like, do whatever you want and run your mouth and press any button you want. <laughs> and, and you know, yeah. the mirror, what do you got to say? I I understand what you're saying, but again, that's not what this show is about, right? Like it's 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 not that. It's just what is the show about? I don't know, <laughs> but I know it's not that, right? It's it's just I don't I re- really don't know. It's mm-hmm. it's space adventures, right? Like it's it's Michael Burnham doing crazy things with mm-hmm. a crew that happens to follow her along. I don't know why, 
it, it's it's more Star Wars than it is Star Trek, right? That's that's all it is. Like they literally were on on Tatooine the first episode with 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 speeders, right? Oh, like that's right, they were, and they did that stupid thing with the 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 ships they oh they god into the, yeah. into the ground and. I thought that I, was cool. I, I would like that. I, I did like that. He, he, I, I thought it was that cool. was an interesting. Solution. It was a, it was a vi- it was a something different that I've never seen before mm-hmm. in Star Trek. You know what I have you know what? seen before cool. in a lot of things: car chases. And you know what I don't need? <laughs> yeah, in Star the, Trek? The, the car chases. The, the motorcycle thing went way on way too long. It reminded me it's, of the stupid Nemesis Doom buggy. I'm like, yeah. it just seems yeah. gratuitous, and it goes on yeah. far too long because it's like, cool. Just like, wrap it up. Ah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Alan reminds me of uh, MK Ultra victim, where he, you know, he's, been, he's been subject to, to to like so many like traumatizing mind control things that he's like, sure, this is this is not so bad, this is good. I, yeah, I, I, this is. I thought putting the ships in the, to protect the village was cool, and I thought the motorcycle. But, but you're sure, is, but it, it, it doesn't, so, I mean, it doesn't I make any sense at all. Mm-mm. But the like, way you put it was, oh, that's better than. Than what they usually do. Well, I mean, yeah, it is. <laughs> what would have been really cool is if we'd seen the crew. I don't know, coming up with the solution that would have been cool. <laughs> oh, that would have been amazing. That would have been so cool because then them doing it, there's a payoff to it, and you'd be like, "Whoa, they actually pulled it off! Amazing!" But it yeah, was just yeah. very like all of a sudden the ships are there, bam. Yeah, and also yeah. like the avalanche came down from a cliff. And it was on a flat plane. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no way, there's no way that that would ever reach the city. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It would just fall down at the base of the mountain, and and that's kind of it. Mm-hmm. And they won't. They don't need to like crash their two ships to stop anything. It would just be stuck in the sand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't yeah. quite understand yeah. though why the sand was still embedded in the ship when they were back in space, and the dots were out there like vacuuming it up. Particularly oh. considering the <laughs> yeah. shields were up. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I, why, I have, why is there sand in the ship in space now? <laughs> I have I have an answer for this because I've thought about it a lot, and it's that the details <laughs> don't matter. <laughs> I mean, it was a cute it was a cute thing, but it made no sense, but, you know. Mm-hmm. Whatever. What's that little robot? Was that is that robot always been there? Is that new? Yeah, dots, well, they, they have a little they, the dots. They yeah, they just made in, spots. They, at the beginning of yeah, the future time. I think I don't like so that the future robot. they do they always have them. They, yeah, they, they I don't like that robot. Them. They mm. they had them in season 2 with Pike. Yeah, did they really? Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah right. feel, that that feels like it doesn't fit Star Trek at all. Yeah. It, it it looks like it looks like Star Wars to me. I'm just like, "Oh, what is well, that?" It's like, there? yeah, cuz in, se- in season 2 the ship has like the Enterprise and Discovery, I have all this like dots. Right. So they have all these like yeah. and they they can fight, they can repair. Like they're just basically droids, and then they also have yeah. fighters too. Like they got a whole mm-hmm. array of fighters that just go out and and engage the enemies. I'm like, oh, I mean, that's they good do? that they they have that, but it's never been seen before on the Enterprise or anything no. that they have that they have a a fighter bay, you know, that goes out. Goes, oh. <laughs> what it does it does make more sense that they have support craft, but it's. I don't like, know what your idea of making sense is, but I don't agree with you. No, well, that I think I think you, when Alan. you have a giant spaceship and you're going out in a in a hostile territory, it helps to have yeah, some but fight, when, a but fighter squadron. It's not a squadron. real spaceship, like Battlestar it's not Galactica. A real it's not a real thing. There's not. There's no real spaceship. So let's I'm forget about saying, what is realistically an average speaking, space. It seems ridiculous that they have no support craft when they're out in deep space. I, yeah, I no, agree. totally. <laughs> but it, it's not realistic in terms of the 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 world and the universe they've set up. Yes. True. Right. Like yeah. it. It doesn't make sense. It just come out of left field. That they suddenly had this ability. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's the only realism that matters, right? They're mm-hmm. just like not sticking with the rules that have been established for for yeah. thirty or forty years or longer, mm-hmm. right? Oh, this is music to my ears. Thank you, Namir. You you're able to like articulate what mm-hmm. I can't. <laughs> so specifically for you, Alan, I have a question. How do you feel? about the like space dock federation headquarters seashell thing i i like that they've had kind of a interesting designs for the ships but i find mm. in this show they don't they don't give the the 
they've they put all this effort into creating this style, but they did not showcase it at all. Like I find we never get any good view. We don't even really get a good look at Discovery. I find this show, and they have, <laughs> and they never do any beauty shots. Like like I I mean I know motion pictures too slow, but I miss beauty shots like just you know slow passes. I mean. They got all like Federation headquarters is, seems kind of cool, and they got all these ships there, but you never see them. And I'm like, what's the mm-hmm. point of making all this stuff if we never get to see them for more than a millisecond? And that There's always kind of bugs me about, about this show. Yeah, that because I that... find they they haven't they you know they've been in the 32nd century now. This is the third season they've been in it, and I don't feel like they 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 they've done much world building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It it feels very small like, for being nine hundred years in the it future. Does. Anything could be something. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like like there's something about the original or or or, or, or like the classic space docks, and those and those aren't even like Federation headquarters. Those are just like the big thingies that ships go in. But there's there's a scale to it, and that and I mean and I, I mean I know I'm just nitpicking design, but that spirally seashelly thing when they do shots of it, they'll have like the, like you say, like, like the ships around it and then it's there, but it looks like it could be like two Anything, feet long. Yeah. Like it, there's no, yeah. <laughs> because it's such a weird shape. It doesn't have, there, there, there's no perspective, yeah. you know? And every time I see it, it like, like yanks me out of what I'm watching. But I find like, it's, it's like, that even thing? The, this season is like, like I found in the third season, you never got a good view of it. Like, mm-hmm. it's like why? You know, we just got to the thirty-second century. I want to see. I want to see what world, what world has has become. Like what, what the federation yeah. has become. What the galaxy. Even become. like when they and you never really when got they went that to Earth. Yeah. yeah, when they went to Earth, there was literally just like a conversation. Somebody beamed up, and that was it. And you know, we just yeah. know that Earth is like by themselves now. You can't go there. Yeah. <laughs> it was very, so, very odd. How much do you think this is about budget? Right, like the like the long conversations, you know, multiple scenes where they're just talking about their feelings in one room, and it's just two people. Like, I don't think that is. I think the show, that they're, they're, the, they're I will a say, huge the, amount of money. Yeah, the first season, mm-hmm. like when they were on the Klingon ships and the Klingon redesign, mm-hmm. those sets were like feature quality. Like the show looked like a movie, and it looked like there was mm-hmm. a ton of mm-hmm. money on the screen. And now it feels like, yeah, it seems like. I don't know if it's a budget thing or a talent thing or I don't know what it is. I but mean, I find the AR they, the AR wall hasn't really helped. Yeah. It kind of looks kind of fakey and you know, the work is They set is not, out, I mean, much. I'm to make something like this is our Star Trek. Mm. This is this is, you know. Yeah, they, they they wanted to go back to the drawing board and I think they at, like big time where where yeah. they had people initially working on season one or lined up to work on season one who had worked on other star trek shows and they were like actually no yeah there's like we nobody. don't like <laughs> like i know a guy who literally got laid off his whole team got laid off because they had experience in star trek yeah it seems like jonathan like Frakes in, is the in, only one that gets any work like from the old yeah the old guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, Every, yeah everybody else is like we don't yeah. want to talk to you ever yeah, like, and bring and 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 the writers that they've collected are not Star Trek. Fresh. Which makes a lot of sense then, mm. from yeah. what I'm seeing. Yeah, it's yeah. There's a, a very like uh, stubborn adherence to this is this is different, which which is one of the reasons why I am no, I'm concerned about Academy. Hmm. Oh, right. I forgot about that. And let's not forget about Section 31 movie and the new prequel movie that's coming out in two years. Um, but we'll come back to that. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what everyone wants. <laughs> Why don't uh, they people no like more, to see? I no don't... More lower decks. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Kurtzman is so stubborn. It's like just give people legacy. They want legacy. They want seven of nine in the captain's chair. It's like, no, no, you no. We're doing Starfleet me? Academy. That's what we're doing. You're going to love it. I was like, fuck you. You remind me of George Lucas. <laughs> when after everybody was like, we hate Jar Jar Binks. He's like, no, you don't. Let me put him in this one scene. 
in yeah, episode like, two. Uh, he's good. He's, You'll go, you're gonna like him this time. He has no lines. You like him this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the question is like, are more people watching Star Trek because of these shows? Like, and that that's really the 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 answer that we so. need. Like, yeah. is it guys, is it working? Did you guys see the Variety article that came out a couple of weeks ago? It was like like somehow Variety got this like scoop on everything. Not actually not somehow Paramount Paramount Plus clearly gave Variety a big scoop <laughs> on like everything um, because they're in the process of being bought by someone. Um, mm. Anyway, uh, but they were talking about how the 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 fan base is aging mm. and they need to bring in new fans <coughs> so apparently the way they think they're going to do that is <laughs> is through doing like young people star trek um which is what academy is going to be um but they're also mm. doing it in the 32nd century <sighs> um they, they are oh mm-hmm. yeah Oh wow! So there's potential for discovery oh, yeah. characters to show up in that. Well, I think Tilly's probably oh, going to be yeah. a regular. Tilly's artist. definitely, yeah. yeah. But you know, mm. Saru yeah. Burnham, they could all show up, I guess. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there's definitely a like, like that's what you know because, and you, you know, and I know because it's because it's the streaming environment. It is all about getting more people signing up, more people, you know, signing up, subscribing, whatever. But it's like they're they're definitely selling their existing fan base short because. I don't think we'll watch anything, audience. anything mm. they put out, we will watch. So I, I don't mm, think there's yeah, anyone, yeah. there's and anyone we're not jumping dying. on Star Trek bandwagon <laughs> because of Prodigy, because of Discovery. I don't think there's any new people. I mean, I, I mean, what? there are, I, you know, I have a friend who's literally watching Lower Decks as her first, as, as her en- entry mm. into Star Trek. Like, right. But, but Lower Decks makes sense because it's good. Yeah, right, I like, I like, I like we're we're gonna recommend. I, you know, I recommend Lower Decks to everybody. Yeah, because it's such a good show. Would I recommend yeah. Discovery? No, they would kill me. They'd be like, why? <laughs> why are you recommending yeah. this? You know, and I, I mean, the thing too about Discovery is that is, is that Discovery has a fan base, and I'm delighted for them that they love this show. I'm, it's wonderful. It's great. Like, like whatever they're getting out of this show, that's great. And there are people who have come into the franchise through Discovery, and that's awesome. You know, like, mm. but, but, you know, but those you have an existing are fan base that you're not making the... anything for. Yeah, they're, they're not going to go over and then watch TNG or the original series. They're going to be like, what the hell is this stuff? I, well, yeah, I mean, I like, wanna... some of them will, That's but the some problem. of them won't. The problem yeah. is, like, Star Trek is this, and just keep doing that. And, and so, and, you know, if I look at Mandalorian, mm-hmm. you know, and what Disney does with Star Wars, they're expanding their fan base and bringing in new people with new mm-hmm. characters, new shows, but they're not doing it by alienating everybody else and trying to do something For the most new <laughs> and breaking, <Yeah. laughs> and breaking oh, everything, no. you know, they, they, you know, if you think about what they're doing, if they let's say with Mandalorian or Andor, is they're going back to, you know, the original trilogy mm-hmm. in terms of the timeline, in terms of the aesthetic and then, but they're telling new, fresh stories with new characters. Exactly. And that's great. Imagine like, what a concept. <laughs> Yeah. And also, yeah. it's and, and they're being very strict about what is stars, what does it sound like, what does it mm-hmm. feel like, what is the and they're just like doing little things like with the music in, in Mandalorian. I'll be giving a little bit more of an electronic sound, yeah, but it still has that out orchestral stuff. And it's just in, it's being done so smartly. And mm-hmm. whatever they're doing right, Star Trek and the, whoever's in charge of Star Trek is doing the opposite. They're just like shitting the bed all over the place, generally speaking. <laughs> And and they're not, you know, it's just, and, and it's just, it, it reminds me of like the Marvel DC thing, you know, mm. of, of how DC just kind of just kept making mistakes over and over again. And then just never correcting, just going, no, we're going to do dark. Mm. Don't tell us what to do, mm. you know, and then trying to sort of correct it inside the universe and just made it like as multi-million dollar movies, like a series of them just, anyway. Mm. You're in, you want to do 20 our, minutes our into this, and are we going to talk about the actual plots of any of these shows, or what? We haven't talked about the villains. We haven't talked about any. I think we kind of like, did. I mean, I, I okay. I the mean, villains we, suck, by the way. I hate the villains so far. I think they're lame. I, you know, I was going to say the opposite. That's why we haven't I, talked about them. I, 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 I kind of like Maul and what's was Locke? Maul Locke. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I like yeah, them. I they're, talk. yeah. Like, they're kind of interesting, right? Like, they've mm-hmm. got this Mickey and Mallory thing kind of going on. Yeah. I don't mind it so much. It's, you know, they're, they're, I they're, they're okay yeah. to watch. They're not my I feel favorite. like we'll have a chance to talk about them as, because, because there's going to be an episode where we get a lot more of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why they have to you know? make the girl like books goddaughter or something. Why is there got to be like a family thing? Like it's the guy. Know. It's the guy's daughter that that he took the name of or something. Like I don't. The get Dread what Pirate Roberts' about. daughter. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I it's, it's kind I, of I don't know. I because because they think that but book needs to have some sort of I stake think... in the whole thing. Yeah, I think the thing that bugs Burnham. me is like is like yeah. like you guys said earlier is that it's Indiana Jones, but there's no Nazis. And he talking about it's like, oh, there's the Breen are, are gathering mm-hmm. and the Tholians are like, why aren't these the guys that that you're competing with to find? The, I really find feel the like the, like like creation. we're not going to see the Breen at all. Yeah, like why why are we gonna see these two Jokers? I'm like, eh, they mm-hmm. don't seem like a really credible threat. <laughs> no. So, like, I I'm not even really sure why they're in it. Like they're and I, they want it, and I don't really, I don't really feel like they're actually a threat. I feel like yeah. they're yeah. Really they're just a couple of crooks. Yeah, yeah. Like, whatever. Yeah, and, and if for that to crooks. work, there has to be there has to be an actual threat. Then, right? Like that's right. Because if because if they were the reason I know that they're going to all end up being friends in the end is that if they actually were bad guys, they yeah. would have done something horrible. Like they would hit killed a cat or something by now. But well, yeah. they did. They did kill Fred. They did. We forgot to talk about Fred. Fred was amazing. I wish there was more Fred. Yeah, like Fred, Fred is yeah. Fred is the the data. The Fred yeah. is the synthetic. Oh, yeah, he was amazing. Oh, yeah, he was yeah. amazing. Yeah, he was he good. Was oh, that was good. That was good. Yeah. he was he was like, he was the data gangster. Yeah, yeah, the gangster well, data. The, the thing about Star Trek shows <laughs> is that villain wise. Like, there are villains, but so many stories are more about, like, a problem to be solved as opposed to a villain, a villain to defeat, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm not convinced that this is going to be, like, we have to defeat a villain here. Like, they're going to find the thing, and, like, I'm hoping that it's a very Star Trek-y, like, we're, we learned something amazing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Life is going to be better now, or whatever. Well, yeah, yeah. I thought it was well, cool that, number... you know, the Enterprise was face, was 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 racing against the, the Romulans and the Cardassians. Mm. And I was like, yeah. there should be, like, a government or whatever, or some sort of dominion or something that, that, that they would be competing with, not just two random... Two guys, yeah. Two random dudes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because like, okay. even... It's like, Even if they kind of like become friends in the end, there's no stakes there. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's the uh, what's the spore guy's dr- uh, name again? Stamets. The, Stamets. Yeah, Stamets. Yeah. 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 So I just remember he. So he comes in and he starts talking to Rainer about his discovery, right? right? And then he's talking about what he thinks the end weapon is going to be, and so he's like, Oh, he's right. Like, oh, it's kind of like the Genesis device, right? Like it yeah. creates life and blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, it could also bring life back to the dead. <laughs> you know? And they're like, what? Oh, really? right. Right? And then so I'm yeah. like, oh, somebody's going to die at the end. Burnham's going to die or or Book is going to die. And oh, then geez. the the thing is going to bring that person back from, uh-huh. from the dead. Just like so it's not going to be a blood mean, into you darkness. You mean to bring yeah. the dead back to life. That's what you meant, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Sorry, what did I say? You the life you bring life to death or something. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's like they're they're yeah. gonna make like a like a zombie book or a zombie Burnham or something like that. <laughs> yeah. At the at the end, so it's not gonna be a weapon. It's just gonna be this thing that creates life. Mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah, I think you're right. There's gonna be a little like catch on that, yeah. baby at the end. A what? Maybe they'll bring back Star Book's baby? whole planet. <laughs> yeah, Star yeah. Baby. At the end. Oh yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. ba- baby Burnham. Yeah. In space. <laughs> um, okay, let's do it. Are you guys ready to do some ratings? I'm cool. ready to do ratings. Okay. How are we doing this? Is it like okay. each episode? I, would, I don't know if I, I... How do we rate this? I have no idea how to do this. I don't know. Well, I, I, I say we just rate the first three episodes out of ten. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to give the first episode of one, the second episode of one, and the third episode of six. There we go. Oh, oh Really? <laughs> Okay, let's do it that way. That works. It really showed up in, in, in your opinion. Huh. Yeah, I'm not, I didn't hate it that much. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. But... 
<laughs> Jenny, you go ahead. Um, because I don't have a I don't have a baseline established, so I'm gonna give one. I think I like two better than three, or did I? Maybe it was the same. I don't know. Like, let's give one. Let's give one like a five, and let's give two and three a six. Mm. That's okay. That's where I'm starting. <laughs> Namir, uh, I'm gonna. So the first one gets a three, and then it mm. progressively gets better. So three, mm -hmm. four, and then five. Okay. Alan, is to be a ten, or this is your ten? <laughs> it did not make me cry. No, uh, I was not that emotional move. I cried a little, but for different exactly for different reasons. Um, no, I the first episode again. I felt like they were just overindulging in the action set pieces, and I didn't really that didn't really jive with me. Mm -hmm. um, so I probably give that one like a five. I was like, I had a good time, but it was it was. Yeah, it was like, yeah. Um, the second one was more fun. There's more Saru. I always like Saru. Um, it was just generally a better episode, better pacing. So I give that one probably like a seven. And this, the last one, I would probably give a six because I liked most of it. I liked the Rainer stuff because that was the high point. Um, yeah. I hated the gray and Adira stuff. I've always hated gray. Yeah. Uh, Ian Alexander is a terrible actor, and I really just hate despise that character. <laughs> so, but I was also happy All that right. I was happy that they uh, they basically wrote wrote him out. So <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm bringing up gray. And I hope we never see you again. Just stay in the trail cave, <laughs> you know. Take care of your worms in the dark and just leave leave Star Trek alone. Never come back. Because <laughs> that character. Wow. Is so, what's your rating? So what's your rating, Alan? <laughs> Where was I? I was gonna. I, Whoa, I think I'll give the, the 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 third one like a, a six. Uh, okay, so we'll be back next week for you didn't more give any ratings. What, what are you doing? You, you didn't give me a rating. I did one one. Oh, was that actually serious? Six. Yes, of course really? it was accurate. Okay. Yes. I was six, like five points you better than the other. Or, or was that? Yeah, yeah, I don't get it. That was episode why, yeah, why three so much, so better? much yeah. better. It's it's like along the same lines. Uh, I just enjoyed it. I just enjoyed it that much better than the other one. No, you're right. I didn't enjoy it that much. I'll give it like a three. I'll give it a three. Yeah, okay. That, that's a bit better. <laughs> okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, we can, we can wrap our heads around that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay, we'll be back. Making stuff up. Next week for <laughs> more spicy discovery reviews yeah. with Nerdiest Prime. Your ratings are like and, one, and 17, no, no 37. Gray. I don't know. Gray is gone. Gray is gone. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> We're just like, when is this going to oh end? God. If you've made it this far, folks, don't forget to <laughs> like and subscribe. And done. Just where is our future?